Sri Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, there was a woman called Mary. So, not uh, our Mary. So, this is the name coming, the story. So, this woman used to, to do chanting every day. Namo Amitabhu, Namo Amitabhu. So the, he, she used to chant Buddha's name 108 times every day, 6 in the evening. All neighborhood knew and she used to do little bell and uh, light little incense and so everybody know the smell and this is Mary's chanting time. Everybody knew. But at the same time, she used to be a little bit so arrogant with the neighbors and always get mad, angry for even little, little things. So what happened? There was a young boy one day thought he wanted, he wanted to, to give a lesson to this woman. So she start her prayer time six o'clock in the evening. This young boy came and start to knock the door and calling her name. And she keep practice, keep practice and chanting, chanting. Oh, Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Amitabha Buddha, so like that. And uh, she thought uh, one time this boy will call her name and then will go away. But no, he is uh, knocking the door and calling her name. Again and again, again and again, more than 10 times. And then he start to, to call, it's kind of like emergency. Mary, Mary, Mary. So like that. Then she got so disappointed because everybody knew this is her prayer that time and why they come and disturb. So she got so mad. And then she got up and went and opened the door with the, the anger and shaking her whole body and uh, shouting to that boy and asking, what's wrong with you? This is my prayer time. Why, why you go shouting like this? What? So this boy told, no, I just want to see how you're doing. She got so mad. And then this boy told, see, you every day, 108 times, you're calling Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Amitabha Buddha. I just call your name only 10 times. See how you got angry, how you got mad. And how, how, what do you think about the Buddha? You every day calling 108 times. So it's like that sometimes, you know, when it comes to our own life. So whatever we say, and sometimes in our, with our bodily action, whatever we do deeply, it's separate from our inner nature. Personally, when it comes to our personal character, it's completely different. So that doesn't mean that uh, you, you, have to, you have to be kind of like uh, good for things. Being good is when it comes to deeper spiritual practice, being good doesn't make any sense. But in conventionally, this, this dharma is go step by step. As example, in the beginning, as a first step, you have to get out of from the unprofitable skills. You have to get out from the, the demerits or the bad. That's the first step. And then you have to develop the good. So that when you start to develop the good, mastering the good, that the whatever the, the demerits or improfitable actions that you use, use to practice become invalid. It anymore, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, work for you. So as example, in the beginning, 
you, if you used to steal, drink, you know, and even uh, killing animal, maybe you used to do that things. So then you stop that. And then you start to practice to all other good things. So once you start to practice that all other good things, this whatever you, you stop anymore, not going to come to you and involving with that. And you can, there's nothing to do with that uh, inside you. You don't have any effort to stay away from that kind of things because you you mastering the good. And then when it comes to vipassana, so all the good and the bad, the both related to the sansara. So when you come to the, the liberation point, when it comes to the, the vipassana point, you have to get out of the good and the bad both. But suddenly you cannot do it. So then in the beginning, you get out of the, all the unnecessary things, demerits or the unprofitable action. And then next you have to get out of the all the profitable actions and all the, the merits also. And then there, there's the, the wisdom come. So in conventional life, sometimes we attach to being good. So the being good is, it is also, you find them very comfortable, the place to exist. And you find a very comfortable zone for you to maintain. And sometimes we, other people appreciate us. Oh, you are so good. Oh, you like that. But when it come to the Dharma or the, when it come to the Vipassana, Deeply, you have to understand that recognizing the truth is the most important part. So that is what the Buddha talked about. Not just maintaining your life being good. So mostly, we, we then you have to come to a point to understand. Regarding your own life experience, so far, whatever the life that you came, you have enough experience to understand this everything change. So whatever that in your life, so far, whatever happened in your life, that everything change. So then from this moment to tomorrow or to next week or the next month or the next year, or oh, till you die, that whatever come to you, it all going to change. And even next life, or oh, even eons by eons, whatever that you experience, that everything going to change. Not only change. So look at your own life Look from this point to look at your just a day or one week or one year or 10 years or the whole life backward, look yourself and then see, is there any satisfaction you earn through your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind? This is, this all your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind is kind of like a bottomless cup, bottomless pot. So whatever you put, go, go away. Not even one single moment going to be there. When you put it, it go away. There's no way that uh, you're going to hold it to something. So that is why again and again, again and again, that we keep keep following. And then from this point to you are backward for yesterday to one week or one year and uh, 10 years or the whole life, if you look, everything selfless, all the experience came to you, even your own body. 
and we name this, we hold this self as our body, our pain, and uh, our awareness, our understanding. So this everything changed. Look at 10 years back, whatever what you used to believe about life, now you're not believing it. And you, you come to a different point and your body completely changed and the name also already changed. See what happened. This is going to happen tomorrow also. Not only for tomorrow, next, for the next week, next year, 10 years, 100 years, uh, till you die, this will happen. Not only that. Eons by eons you come. That same thing going to happen. So the thing is, when it comes to the Buddha's teaching, the Buddha never talk about there is nothing. There are things. There are, of course, there are, there are a lot of things around us. And we can experience things. But what the Buddha said that what you experience is not belong to you or even it is, there is no kind of like a deeper self to own that anything. This everything happened according to the cause and effect. That is what you have to understand. So whatever that you go through, it all, you, you will experience many things. You will go through many things, but that whatever come to you, whatever you go through, always remember, it belong to impermanent, unsatisfactory nature and selflessness. There is nothing that you can find, something going to be related to and permanent within this. There is nothing that you can going to find something permanent with the, the self. Something permanent in the satisfaction. Something permanent in the, the so solid, unchangeable nature. You are not going to find anything. So then when, when the moment come to experience something, are you, are you aware about it? Do you know that? So whatever you see, it is okay. You see, oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. So whatever you see, do you know in that beauty that you see, it, going, it, it is not going to be permanent? Then it is okay. That is what you have to practice. That is what you have to develop. Knowingly that whatever you experience, it's going to it going to change. So otherwise, we always keep keep running, keep running, keep running. So there is a sutta called Nadi Sutta. It's a beautiful sutta that uh, regarding this our life. So Nadi means the river. So this is how the sutta, the, the, the sutta explain it. So the river, when the river start from the mountain, it is start to go downward and wherever the possible way to find the path to go to go down. So little by little, little by little, river start to, to flow and then the, the, it find in, the, in the making the path and the path become bigger, bigger, bigger. So now the ground hold it as a river. And the water hold the ground as the river. And then what happening? In the both side of this river, there are many, many trees. And even the, the grass. And in many weeds. Different kind of trees grow. Why? Because the river has water. It provide, it provide the facilities to these trees. And then that all the, the grass and the, the weeds and all these bushes and the trees, branches, everything 
have a deeper connection with the river. Why? Because it's depending from the river. It depending from the river. So then what happened? One day, there is a person jumped to this river. And then what happened? He got into the current and he just go away. And then he tried to find, find a way to get out of the, the river, get out of this current. So what he does? He tried to hold the, the, the grass around the, 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 and the, the band of the river. And he think he, he, can, he can hold and he will, he will get the help out of it and get out of the river. But what happening? When he hold the grass with the huge piece of clay or the mud, the grass also go with the water. And then sometimes he get into some bigger bush and try to hold that also. And then what happened? That bush also with the, the piece of clay or the mud, you know, and go with the, the river. And sometimes he, hold, he try to hold the branch and the branch also to break down and go with the river. Why it happened like that way? Because this all part of the river. And this all have a deeper connection with the current. Why this all came out of the river. It is not a separate from river. So then how you can escape from this? Then you have to know swimming. So our life also like that. This is how it, it, it related to our life. So this, we like to see things. We like to hear things. We like to smell things. We like to eat things. We like to have associate people and have sensation. And we like to think good things. And so how this life happened to us from the first level, when we die, why we born again? Because we, we had the desire to see, desire to hear, desire to smell, desire to taste, desire to associate, desire to think. That's why we got our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. So it came, it is a kind of like a, the river, the desire is the river. And this all the grass, bushes, trees, tree branches, that's everything I ear, no stun, body, mind. And now we want, when you have a kind of like, a, when you have unhappy moment, sad, worry, and sometimes you like to see something good. And seeing something good, you think, you, you find the, the peace. So it's like you are in the, in the current of the river. You are in the pain, unsatisfaction, dukkha, suffering. And then you think seeing something will make you happy. So that's why even in a family, if something happens, you know, even if the child children cry and if they fight and if you want to make them you know, calm and sometimes you say, oh, I will bring that to you. I will buy that to you. No. And sometimes to encourage children, some, you say, oh, if you pass this, I will give this gift to you. So it, and that we think to make that child happy or to make the husband happy, make his wife happy. But we don't see that also the part of the, the desire. 
and we try to hold it and you hold it and you go with it. And you go with the current become more stronger, stronger, stronger. So then when you uh, like, uh, when you have kind of like uh, unhappy moment, you say, okay, let's go somewhere or let's go out. So you go out. Why you go? You want to find the happy and calm, relaxed comfort. And you, you're not going to find like that way. You know, if you, if you find something out somewhere, it, it may, you, you feel the change, that is it. Otherwise, that wherever you are at your home, you feel calm, relaxed, comfort. That's why you come back. Because in case if you find a place better than the, your house, you're not going to come back. That is the very simple nature of this living beings. We are, we born with that. That is what our inner nature is. We go with that. We go with that. So, for a moment, you go for a change, you know. So, as example, you go to hotel or you go for a vacation and you have to pay for that. You know, and everything, it is not belong to you. And you, it, for a moment, you just enjoy. That's it. But if you go for a place, you no need to play, pay anything and everything like you, your home and nothing to do anything and no one going to question anything, you're going to be there. So we, we just try to break the pattern and we try to find the change. But remember that what we're trying to do, we try to feed, feed ourselves. The feeding to us to find the comfort, that's mean feeding to the same current and looking at something and you become happy. Hearing something, you become happy. And that happiness is, you don't see the your I happen because of that. Your ear happened because of that. And now when you get disturbed, you again you go into that and then again and again, again and again, you go with this current. So the swimming skill mean how you can get out of this. That is called sati, awareness, recognition. So that's mean when something happened, when you are in the current, don't try to hold it to anything. Don't, don't have a comparison thinking this, that is better than this. Th because that make you more worst. Not the situation. When somebody blamed you, that blaming not going to hurt you that much because you, you hear that every day. It is, it is normal for you. You even... You know, you 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 are you are already memorized that you know in your memory when other person get mad, angry, disappointed, how that person going to do things, you know. But knowingly that if that person do it yes tomorrow, why you get again unhappy? Because now you already know that, but still you become unhappy. Because in your mind you hold it to another version. So when you hear that, what happened naturally, you start to compare it to something. That comparison triggered the, the fire. It brings the burning. So then otherwise just hearing, you know, it is you, you can hear the, then what you think. You know, you have capable, why? Because it's it not going to make any, any change. No. But the thing is that comparison, when you have the comparison, because you hold it to something and trying to escape from this current, you trying to hold it to something. 
So that is your five aggregates, form, feeling, sensation, formation, recognition. So deeply, you start to have idea, you projecting something and you will start to memorize something. That memory to this incident, you compare. In that comparison, it's like you holding the grass and it take you. So then always remember, accept it and be mindful. This, just know yourself. So if anybody get mad, disappointed, upset, just, just be relaxed. Then just know this is your husband, this is your wife, this is your child, this is your parents, and this is your neighbor, and this is your boss, this is your co-worker. You cannot escape. You cannot call 911. You trapped there. You, you have to understand that. And accept it. Once you are in the trap, you don't move that much. You don't make a mess. Why? Because then it get, in tight, get tight, tight, tight. So then you accept it. You surrender to it. Bend, bend all the joints. Don't, don't try to be, you know, don't try to be tough. So that's why it's say, uh, like uh, when you get, get married, you have to remember, you have to decide. Bend, you, you want to master the bending or breaking. If you cannot bend, that's mean if flexible, you're going to break. So it, it's like that. It's okay to bend all the joints. Bend all the joints and just find your peace. Because you know this person like this. You know, we, 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 we know how to behave with animals. But we have no ability to deal with people. Even though we know who they are. Why we cannot? We know their nature. We know their behavior. We know how they think. You know, we know who is inside the skin, but still why we cannot deal with them. Because when we are in the current, when we jump to the river, we hold it to the grass, tree, branch, bushes, around the, the band, and we, we try to get the help. That means imagination. We visualize, we compare to something. In that comparison, you again jump to the current, again jump to the river. Because that comparison came out of the, the river. So that comparison wherever, that whatever you have in your mind, that came out of your inner desire. So then accepting mindfully accepting this is like this, this is okay, this is the behavior, any situation, it is okay. See, today I saw one article, this uh, new anxiety, that the new anxiety is regarding the vaccination, especially all the, the middle-aged and old people, and they get so depressed because of this vaccination. See this already they one year they, they went through the very dangerous situation in the, in the, with this virus and they still okay. And now they come to a point and they're creating kind of like a depressed inside them, inside their mind and thinking about vaccination. They don't understand. They already went through time period. They, they, they okay. Of course, if there is a possibility, you have to get it. But accepting something is different. That's why anything can, anything, whatever that you see, whatever you watch, hear, eat, even associate, whatever you think can can provide the, the current to deeper, the, the increase the desire. So don't allow it to happen. 
So the mindfulness is, is kind of like you have a swimming skill. So the mindfulness, when you become mindful, you're not going to, to react with the outside nature and you recognize it. In that recognition, you come to very calm, relaxed understanding. With that understanding, when you do things, it is totally different. It is not anymore a reaction. So mostly we just react to situations. Practicing meditation, developing mindfulness, developing this mental culture mean it separate you from reactions. And it brings you to a point to see how things come to be as they are. When you have that knowledge, with that knowledge, whatever the action you take, it always going to be good for you and good for others. It never going to bring any harm, any disappointment, unhappiness, sadness, worry, do anything. So then remember, in this life, that we are in a current, we came to this point because of the, our desires with the greed, hatred, delusion. And we, we bound to the form, feeling, sensation, formation, recognition. And we hold it to that. We build on it. And if you look for the satisfaction through the same way with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. And you're not going to get out of this. Why? Because this everything built out of the, the same river. So then you, you have the mindfulness. That is the, the beauty of the human mind. And even though we came out of this river and still you have the mindfulness, that when you develop that mindfulness, awareness, that mindfulness is kind of like the you developing a swimming skill. So nothing, nothing wrong with the river, nothing wrong with the current, nothing wrong with the water, nothing wrong with the whatever the, the both side of the river, nothing wrong with the grasses or nothing wrong with the bushes or the trees. But the current you use yourself to, to get out of the, the river. So that is a skill you have to develop rather than hold it to get help or depending from something and have a moment even within yourself without depending from your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, even from thoughts. Come to a complete moment to be solid. In that solid moment, bring the awareness to see that what this all and then you will see this all depend on according to your validation. Acceptance. So if you don't accept it, it's going to be same like that way. If you're not going to validate it with the desire, it's going to be in the same way. And if you're not going to compare it to something, it's going to be the same. So this comes accepting, validating, and comparing this all bring the drama to our life. So if you don't have that drama in your head itself, you find your peace. And that peace bring your transformation, which we call the liberation, that liberation which we call ultimate bliss of the Nibbana. So with that, I bless upon everyone. With this good practice, may all of you be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to you. May no difficulties come to you. May no problems come to you. May you also have the patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life. During this time period, may everyone stay healthy and safe. And finally, May all of you attain supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sabbiti yo vajjantu sabbaro go vinasatu mate bhavatantara yo suki diga yuko bhava. 
ಸಂಪತ್ತಿಸಿದ್ಧಿಯಾಪತ್ತಿಸಿದ್ಧಿಯಾಪತ್ತಿಸಿದ್ಧಿಯಾಪತ್ತಿಸಿದ್ಧ